Okay, so you bought one of these ePay, e-dumpster, uh, digital VFO units. Okay, let me get my light on here. Let me turn my light on. Yeah, I know, I should have been set up ahead of time. Okay, here it is. You see this? These were $17 on eBay. And I just had to buy one. There was no information. It sat just like this. So 17 bucks. I uh, ordered it. I got it, and I started looking at it. I'm like, I can't figure this thing out. I'm screwed. All right. So I went and looked in all the vendors that sell this. And one of them actually did this. Now I'm going to put this up at the end. Okay. Let's see if this fits in there. All right. Now you may or may not be able to read this. I don't know how good my camera is. But in other words, look for this vendor that did this real quick. Uh, he shows where the keyboard goes. The keyboard goes in here. Without the keyboard, it looks like this. Without the keyboard, you can't key frequencies in. Now, you're also going to need, this is a rotary encoder. All right? This rotary encoder can be bought uh, probably on a, um, I bought mine on an um, uh, Arduino site uh, that sold Arduino. See, it comes with the circuit board on the back. You don't need that. You unsolder it from that. And it made, it made this thing. Now, this is a complete unit. I can actually power this up. I could show you all the buttons. Okay, let's let's throw some power on. See if the camera can see it. Okay. Okay, so the camera can see it. Now, sometimes it doesn't see it. Now, let's throw it off. I'm not I'm not I'm not concerned with showing you how to operate this thing. Once you get this schematic here or this pictorial, uh, you'll be all set. Now. This is the keypad you're going to need. You're going to have to wire it in. you got to have this. You also have to have this rotary encoder. Now, besides turning the, to go up and down in frequency, this has a function where you press this button down, and it, it has another option, and that's to click through the menus. And then you turn this, and you set your offsets, your frequency, uh, whatever other wacky things are, uh, bells and whistles that are in this piece of steam being a uh, heap of shit. Now, what it is, is it has a, um, a crystal oscillator that's temperature controlled. Okay? It's got a processor on here, and then it's got a synthesizer chip to do all the frequencies. Now, that all sounds great once you get it all wired up and you're working with it. Now, the sine wave comes out on this high frequency um, screw on um, Jack. We'll call it a jack. Okay, and I came off it with capacitors. Uh, it does not produce a, a clean square, uh, a clean sine wave. Certain frequencies, it produces absolute shit. Okay, and that's the problem with a lot of digital radios, the cheaper ones. The synthesized voltage controlled oscillator, which controls uh, in the mixer, you got the incoming signal that mixes with the oscillator to produce your first IF. Okay. You want that sine wave to be very pure looking. And that's to produce in the mixer. You produce a very good signal. You don't have any distortion. You don't get any signals that don't belong there. But that's not what this is. This is out of a radio that probably didn't sell well. And there's probably 20 vendors on eBay selling it. And like I said, when I bought it, it was $17. Now it's up to $29. Now don't confuse this with just this. This is just a frequency counter. It's pretty decent. Um, I was having trouble with getting mine to stay set for the offset. All right. Now, you got to be careful. If you're going to use one of these with a receiver, make sure it can do an offset. There are units out there that just put a frequency out uh, from, say, 100 kilohertz all the way up to 100 megacycles. Okay. They put out a really nice sine wave. But you, when you go to use it for the radio, you can't set the display to do the offset. Because when you say you're, you're, you're receiving one megacycle, well, the oscillator is running at 1.455. And the, and the 0.455 is your first IF. 
and that's what happens. Uh, and in order for the display to read the correct frequency, you usually run the oscillator 455 above the incoming signal. This is stuff you'll learn if you actually build a radio and actually understand what you're doing. Okay, but I wanted to show you this. You know, you buy this thing, you know, you see it, it looks like, you. wow, look what you get. And it's $29 now. I bought it, like I said, it's like 17 And then um, I realized, uh, you know, to, to mount this in a box, these are switches. And you're going to have, have a row of holes. And then what are you going to put for buttons? You're going to have to make some type of custom button. I can do that, but you know what? This thing isn't worth it. But I still went on to buy the, the key entry for, cre for entering frequencies. You know, technically, if you just put this on here, you could spin for a half hour and get up and down in the frequencies that you need. But you're going to need this rotary encoder. And you're going to need this keypad. Oh, and then the wires on the back. Now, in my case, I actually went on eBay and I figured out what the hell these connectors were called. And don't ask me what they're called now. It's lost in one of the videos that I deleted. But in other words, I used um, uh, connectors I had from an old radio. And not a real old radio. It was a radio from the 80s. And um, it was R71A. So I had a bunch of them. And the, the pins, the connectors did fit. Uh, I had to cut them to length and customize it. And I got this working. And then I said, you know, for future product projects, it might be nice to have to buy um, this type of connector. And I can cut this to the length I want. You, you, you push in on the pin. The pin comes out. You cut it with, with, a, with like a... Um, uh, exacto saw. They make these little miniature saws. And you can cut it with that. You can also cut it with a razor blade. Take your time. Alright. And then once you cut it, then you got uh, whatever length you cut it. Save the other piece because that you, you might use that one for something else. But I just wanted to show you, you know, when you see something in a picture, you're like, ooh, ooh, that could that'd be good. In your mind, your mind starts working on what you could build with it. But even if you do buy all this stuff, uh, it will work with the radio, okay? I got it to work, but it, it's not the greatest oscillator, okay? It, yeah, it does a wide frequency range. Oh, it does, from, it does from 100 kilohertz all the way up to 100 megacycles, or maybe more, all right? But it's not the greatest. And all the people that use this type of thing in a radio, they have it laying out on the bench. No case, no shielding. And then they always put on like WWV for you, or actually CHU Canada, which is one of the easiest uh, signals to get with almost anything. You can actually get it with a crystal radio set, uh, a shortwave crystal radio set, but you won't get it with this radio. This is a piece of heaping shit. Anyway, I just wanted to show you this and what you might be up against. And uh, I've been looking for um, a synthesized VFO or a digital VFO for a project I want to do. But I don't want all these buttons. I want the thing to tune up and down a certain range. That's it. I don't want I don't want 100 kilohertz to 100 megacycles. You know, there's radios out there that this thing's from, and they're shit. And then whoever was making this for the radio, uh, the radios aren't going to sell well because they're shortwave. Nobody nobody really buys shortwave radios anymore. So then they just continue to make these things by the boatload, and they're up there on. Um, eBay and uh, like 20 different vendors selling it and any, the price can be anywhere from uh, 26 bucks to 29 the guys in the United States that are selling it uh, they want a little bit more money now I promise I'm going to show you this all right let's get my my light on there and uh, hopefully you can you can see this but all you really need to do is to see this picture all right See that picture? Here's your rotary encoder. Here's the numbers that come off the keyboard connector. And these numbers, they, they are, are set off here. Okay? And these have a, a, a binary weighted number. You know, 2 plus 3, 1 plus 2. And that's the, for the scan. This does scan. And, and then your, your encoder. And you would, good luck figuring out how to wire this up if you didn't, you didn't have this. But now that you know it, that this is on some of the vendors, go up there and click on the, on the unit you bought on different vendors and look down on their pictures. 
and you'll find guys that have actually done this for you. Okay? That's all I can tell you. But uh, as far as using this thing for like a really a scientific experiments, uh, the output, where do you see the output on your scope? Uh, it's, it's basically a derivative of um, a square wave because a synthesized chip, which is up in here, I believe this is the chip right here. This is these, I think these are picks. And then you got your display. One of them could be a display driver. I didn't look, I didn't really get into it because after I bought it, I realized this isn't what I wanted. Once I saw this, this, the, the sine wave coming out of this, I'm like, I don't want that. You know, you can't evaluate a mixer circuit if you're hitting it with a square wave. Okay. These are the things these guys are doing out there. Okay. They're building um, Arduino uh, VFOs for a radio. That's, you, if you don't shield it, you don't know what you're doing. It's worthless. Oh, it's pointless. Let's use the word pointless. I've been reading lately about pointless. Uh, people saying that uh, the human race is pointless. And so many things are pointless. Who really cares? I still care a little bit. I care enough to do this video to warn you ahead of time. And if you get in deep, it's your own fault. And, uh, you know, like I said, I saw it. I didn't buy just one. I bought two. And uh, that's how I am. I buy two of them. You think it, maybe I'll burn it out accidentally and I'll have the second one. Or the first one doesn't work right. And I think it's me, and it turns out I got a bad one, which one of these radios, the heaping piece of shit, it's on the bench here under the under the rubble, uh, had a, full, a blown front end. They just repackaged it back up, you know. And you email them, they don't answer you back. Once they got your money, yeah, you go through eBay and argue and send it back, and then they, they keep your money and then the radio. Uh, I've been down that road, okay. But uh, this rotary encoder, that's how it looked. With the circuit board, and I had to remove the circuit board from. It. I had to cut away. It wasn't easy. Now you might be able to, since time has gone on, you might be able to get the exact rotary encoder for this project on eBay because so many people are selling the pile of shit. But they know that most people are never going to hook this up. They're going to buy it for twenty nine dollars, and in their mind, they're going to play make believe. And then uh, when if they do hook it up. They've already got their, they've already got your money, okay? But this came from some type of radio, and um, it's really a pain in the ass to set all the different parameters you have to set on it. Uh, just and then you got you push a button and it jumps between bands and all that. It, it's an almost, it's a big almost. I think that's it. All right, that's it.